Now it is a uh, chapter review, chapter 14, partial derivatives. From the chapter, I selected three sections. We'll cover them briefly. Uh, let's see the definition. Given g equals f of x, y, the linear approximation or the tangent plane approximation of the function near the point a, b is given in this equation. z0 is function value at the point and f sub x, f sub y are the partial derivatives evaluated at the point, and then x minus a, y minus b. That is um, uh, linear approximation. And the equation of the tangent plane uh, can be gotten in this way. So for this one, and there is z, and we are moving this on the other side, and then uh, this is uh, the equation of the tangent plane. We can reorganize this one by moving right side to left hand side, so we reach at that. So we also you can write in this way. Now um, that equation can be uh, obtained in this way if we consider level surface uh, for that one. Then we can move this to left hand side, and we can reach at this one. Let's say uh, there is capital F, then now we can get the gradient of uh, the function. Then x derivative will be minus f sub x, y derivative must be minus uh, f sub y, and z derivative must be 1. That is exactly uh, these components. And there is one half. Okay. So this one, uh, we are considering this one as here. Now, in later, in chapter 16, for parametric surface and their areas, uh, we are using it. A surface, S is uh, formed by the graph of uh, the z called f of x, y. And then we can parameterize it using that map. Okay, x, y are independent variable, and that is a z component. Uh, from this uh, parameterization, r sub x cross r sub y, the normal vector can be found in this way. So um, in chapter 16, we'll consider it. That is exactly this one. Okay. Uh, partial derivatives doesn't imply differentiability. Now, through the theorem, now they are really almost the same. F sub x, F sub y exists. Partial derivatives exist and continuous uh, at uh, a point. Then uh, F is differentiable at the point. So when you are ask to check if a given function is differentiable, then you have to show partial derivatives exist and they are continuous. Now, in this section, the total differential or simply differential is defined for the function of this form, z called f of x, y. Change in on the tangent plane in the vertical direction, uh, that is a uh, dependent differential, total differential, that is f sub x dx, f sub y dy. Here, uh, dx and dy are uh, change in x and y directions respectively. So this dz is a change uh, along the tangent plane. Okay. Find an equation for the tangent plane to the elliptic proboloid. Okay, we can get it uh, quite easily. And we have to get here z0. Okay, already it is given. There is xy, ab, and there is a z0. So already uh, a value is given. 
Now we have to find f sub x and f sub y. That is 2x and f sub y. That is 8y. We have to evaluate them at 1 and 1. x is 1, y is 1. And that is 2 and a. Okay. So here, uh, an equation must be given in this way. z minus z0, which is 5, equal. Now, f sub x, which is 2, and x minus x0, that is 1, plus 8 times, that is f sub y, y minus y0. You may arrange it a little bit differently, uh, like this one, but you can uh, just um, uh, put it this way. Okay. This example is asking uh, to explain why the function is differentiable at 0, 2. Now, once x is 0 and y is 2, then around this point, this term is well defined, and also this term is well defined. And around there, you can find uh, partial derivatives. And also, uh, you can see easily they are continuous. Let's begin with f sub x, x derivative, then that is 1 over x plus 1. Now, for this one, cosine derivative will be minus sine and x over y. Now, x derivative of this term will be 1 over y. Now, around the 0 and 2, um, everything is well defined. Yeah, the continuous. So we know that exists and continuous. For f sub y, OK, y derivative, it will be 0. And now, minus sign x over y. For this term, y derivative, that must be x over okay, minus y squared. Right? And around the 0, 2, x is 0, y 2, then mm, definitely it is continuous. So that both exist and continuous, which means the function is differentiable at the point. Okay? Use a linear approximation to estimate uh, uh, the value when here the function value f sub x, f sub y are given at 2, 5. So basically, that is 2 and 5. It is changed to here. Now that is um, 2.2 and 4.9, right? OK. So uh, let's um, uh, try to get the uh, equation. OK. Linear push measure, by definition, that is x, L of xy equals z0 plus f sub x and x minus uh, x0, right? And then uh, uh, plus f sub y now uh, y minus y0. Just we're using the values z0 as already given here. That is a 6, right? Okay, that is z0. And f sub x as 1. Now, that is x. This is x0. So that 2.2 minus 2. Uh, and then here, f sub y at the point is minus 1. And now, uh, that is y value, is y0 value. So 4.9 minus 5. OK, that is 6. Plus, that is 0 0.2. OK, again, that is, um, OK, this is uh, minus 0 0.1. So that, that is plus 0 0.1. So we have 6.3, OK? Now, that portion is the same as now dz, 
again. Here, the shape is a little bit different, but anyway, uh, in the definition, uh, that is now a dx is changing x direction, dy is changing y direction. We are using exactly the value that is f sub x and f sub y. So that portion is dz. And the differential dz is change uh, on the tangent plane, not realistic function value, uh, change of the uh, function value is change on the tangent plane. Okay. Okay, let's go to next section. Directional derivative and gradient vector. The directional derivative for given unit vector u equal a b it's um uh, it's a uh, 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 for a differential function is defined in this way now du f x y is limit of this quotient and when you manipulate algebraically then we know there must be gradient of f dot u so that means that gradient u is projected along that direction. Okay. And here the maximum value uh, of directional derivative for all choice of u, of course, there must be unit factor length one is the same as now that magnitude of gradient. So that means that the gradient vector is direction fastest changing. In fact, gradient is the uh, direction so the function value increases uh, fastest. So that's the uh, knowledge we can get uh, from um, this analysis. Okay. Now we'll consider again here um, tangent plane and normal line. And th that is uh, we questioned earlier. Okay, we start with uh, yeah, that uh, level uh, surface given in this form, and mm, a point is uh, on the surface, and tangent plane uh, to the surface at the point x zero uh, must be there, um, because um, now for the level surface gradient is normal direction, normal vector dot x minus x zero. X zero is the point, and x is arbitrary point on the plane. Then, uh, because it's, um, once we have a uh, normal vector, that is normal vector, then that is now x zero. Then, if we choose any arbitrary point, then this uh, must be orthogonal. So this dot product must be zero. Uh, in detail, you can write in this way, f sub x, x minus x zero, f sub y, y minus y zero, uh, f sub z, z minus z zero, right? uh, equals zero. For normal equation, this is a normal vector, and assuming that uh, all are non-zero, and we can write in this way. That is a normal line. Okay. Okay. We have an example. F of xy is x plus sine xy. Uh, find the directional derivative of f at the point one zero in the direction given by the angle theta is uh, pi over three. Okay, so for directional derivative, we have to find for the direction uh, unit uh, vector. So u must be now angle is pi over 3, so then cosine pi over 3 and sine pi over 3. Okay, for that one is half, and for sine, that is square root of 3 over 2. Okay, we found uh, the unit factor. 
and to find the directional derivative, and we have to find a gradient and evaluate it at 1, 0. Okay, gradient, x directional derivative, which is 1, and now that is a plus cosine xy, and x derivative must be y. How about y directional derivative? And that must be 0 from here. And this portion must be cosine xy. And we are now, uh, y is the variable. So that, that we have to put here x. OK, we have to evaluate at 1 and 0. x is 1, y equals 0. x is 1, y equals 0. That term will be 0, so it's 1. Now, x is 1, y equals 0, cosine 0 is 1, so that again 1. So, gradient vector is 1 and 1. So, uh, uh, the directional derivative, which is same as uh, gradient of f, oops, uh, I put here dot, but there is no dot here. Okay, there is gradient of f dot u. So we make a dot product. Then there's half plus um, square root of 3 over 2. Okay, that's the answer. In what direction does f have the maximum rate of change? Um, we did mention here, but it, uh, okay. For this dot product, we know that there is a length of f and length of u, which is 1, and cosine theta. Theta is angle between u and gradient of f. Okay, anyway, that is gradient of f, and it is maximized when uh, cosine theta is 1, which means that now the angle theta is 0. Right? That means u is the same direction of the gradient, then uh, that is maximized. That becomes 1, so that we reach at the maximum. So answer for this first portion of number 2 is the gradient direction. Right? That is uh, gradient f direction. Uh, is the answer for the first question. And then for second one, what is the maximum rate of change, which is the same as the length of gradient? All that we know is 1, 1, so that there is square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So that, that, that is maximum in the gradient direction. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Find the equation of equations of the tangent plane and normal line at the point x is 0, y equals 0, and z is 1 to that uh, uh, surface. So we can define, for example, capital F of x, uh, y, z. We are moving this to the other side. So that x plus y plus z minus e to the x, y, z. So it is 0. So it is a level surface. So from this one, we try to get the gradient, which must be normal vector to the tangent plane. OK, that one is x derivative 1. Now y, z minus, uh, okay, before e, once we try to make a derivative with respect to x, then yz will come out. So we put here yz e to the xyz. Now, y derivative, this again is 1 and minus, and now xz will come out, and e to the xyz. Okay, finally, z derivative, then 1 minus xy e to the xyz, right? Now we have to evaluate at 
uh, here now zero zero one. Right. Okay, then y equals zero, so it's one. X is zero, so it's again one. Now uh, both are uh, uh, zero, so that anyway, okay, not zero is must be one. Second term is zero here, so it must be one. Okay, the normal vector is one and one and one, uh, so that here uh, the tangent plane is now one x minus x0, which is 0, plus that direction is 1, slope is 1, and y minus uh, y0, and plus, again, z, and z minus z0, okay, equals 0. So you can simplify to reach at this one. And now, normal 9, that is um, x minus 0, over 1, that one, equals, now 1, uh, y minus 0, over 1, equal z minus 1, over 1, right? So that x is, y is z minus 1, that is uh, an equation for the normal line, okay? Okay, now section 14.8, uh, method of Lagrange multipliers. Okay, this is a technique for solving optimization problem with uh, some constraints. Here we'll deal with uh, the equality constraint. Now, from uh, uh, observation and um, in the uh, main lecture, we know that uh, now the gradient of f must be parallel to uh, gradient of g at uh, optimal point. So uh, for that one, we can write in this way, they are parallel. So by, by using a parameter, we can write in this way. And this one must be satisfied for x, y, z. So we, um, we have to solve this one. Uh, that is uh, the method of Lagrange multiplier. For the maximum or minimum values of the optimization problem, we have to find the first all values of x, y, z, and lambda such that uh, these are satisfied. And among those points, we evaluate f and we can find the maximum and minimum. From here, we have three equations. Here, another equation. There are four equations. And there are four unknowns. So that we can solve it. But it does mean that we have a unique solution. But we can find the finite number of solutions. Mm -hmm. So that we have to solve this four equation for four variables. Once it is two-dimensional problem, then there are three variables, x, y, and lambda, and there must be three equations. Okay. Okay. Use uh, Lagrange multipliers to prove that a rectangle with a maximum area uh, that has a given um, perimeter is a square. Okay. Now we have here a rectangle. Let's say the length is x, length is y. Then uh, perimeter must be 2x uh, plus 2y equal p. That is constraint. Now, we have to maximize uh, here the area as x, y. We have to maximize this quantity subject to that constraint. This is f of x, y. That is um, g of x, y. Okay, from here, if we make a uh, uh, gradient, then there is y and x. From this one equals lambda 
and gradient of G, which is 2N2. Right? Okay, so here, um, the right side is the same, uh, which means that now uh, here x must be y. So we reach at this result. That means this rectangle is a square. Right? Find the maximum and minimum values of this function on the circle. Okay, that is f of x, y. Now this one is g of x, y. So from this one, x derivative is 4x and y derivative is 2x minus 1 and lambda times gradient of g, which is 2x and 2y. So we have three equations. From this first one, we have 4x equals lambda 2x. So divide by 2, so we have 2x equals lambda x. From the second one, now here divide by 2, we have y minus 1 equal lambda y. That's exactly that one. And the last equation is the constraint. x, y should satisfy this equation. Okay, so we have three equations. We have to solve this equation. From the first equation, if we move this one to the left hand side, then that is the same as yeah, 2x minus lambda x equals 0, which means that now x times lambda minus 2 equals 0. That implies x is 0 or lambda is 2. Let's start with uh, x is 0. Then we don't, have to, uh, we don't have to worry about this one. x is 0. Then here from third equation, we can see y squared must be 4, which means that y is plus minus 2. So when x equals 0, we have that one. We found x, y. Secondly, now say uh, lambda is 2, because over here, when lambda is 2, then now once we have lambda is 2, then from second equation, and y minus 1 is 2y, lambda is 2. So that means that here, this one, we are moving this one over there so that minus 1 equal y. Okay, y is minus 1. Then now, from equation 3, y is 1, minus 1, then y squared is 1, that means x squared equal 3, and that implies x is plus minus square root of 3. Okay, okay. so we have a points uh, here. Let's look at uh, these points, okay? Now, um, that is when x is 0 and y is plus minus 2. And when uh, y equals minus 1, then x is uh, plus minus square root of 3 and y is minus 1. So, from this one, now let's try to evaluate f value. f, uh, 0 and 2, the first point, your positive case, and f is 0, x is 0, y is 2, then the values must be 1. And 2x squared plus y minus 1 squared. Okay, now how about f um, 0 minus 2? Then, now, um, that portion is 0, y is minus 2, then minus 3 squared, so that the value is 9. How about f is um, plus minus square root? Okay, okay, that same anyway here, uh, x squared, and now minus one. Then, okay, two times three, squared must be three, and plus y is minus one, then minus two squared. 
so that that must be 4, right? So that uh, uh, that is now um, 10, right? Okay, so we, we have values. Now, 1 and 9 and 10, among them, smallest one is 1, largest one is 10, when x is plus or minus square root of 3, and y is minus 1. Okay? So we solve that. Minimum is 1, maximum is 10. On this uh, circle of radius 2, Okay, now let's find the maximum and minimum values of uh, the same problem. Now, rather than circle, we consider disk. So we have to check also inside the, the circle. And earlier, in last problem, yes, we try to get maximum minimum along the circle. And then we found that here along the circle, the values are changing, f is changing from 1 to 10. Minimum is 1, maximum is 10. We know that. Now, uh, we have to check also inside how. We have to find the critical points. So let's try to get gradient. Now, x derivative is uh, from this one, that is 4x. And y derivative is 2y minus 1. Then if we uh, set it equal 0, then now x must be 0 and y must be 1. So that that's x is 0 and y is 1. This point okay, around the center, that one is now a critical point. So we can check the value 0 at 1. Then, now, here, for the function, the first portion is 0 and second portion is 0 again, so that the value is 0. Over there, f is 0. So now, if we consider everywhere, the minimum is 0, maximum is 10. Right? Okay. okay, this is uh, the end of chapter 14. We'll continue. Uh, for chapter 15. Thank you.